And I'm joined by Giants prospect DJ Snelton. DJ, you were drafted in 2013. The Giants were World Series champions that year. Did that make it extra special? Yeah, absolutely. It's always great to become part of a dynasty. You know, they've won three World Series in the last five years. And just going to that organization, it was going to be a challenge to work through it all and, you know, have some competition along the way. And I think it's good because when you have eternal competition to work with, you know, it makes you want to be better on and off the field. Now talk about that day, your draft day. How special was that for you? I was so nervous, I gotta be yeah. honest. Um, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I was with my family. I was back home at my dad's house with my brother and now his wife. And I just remember watching each guy go on the draft and just the anxiety of knowing when you're gonna go. I remember having to play catch with my brother to calm myself down, driving to go get lunch and stuff like that. It was, it was the longest day of my life, but it was worth every minute. And once you heard and you got the call and everything. Did you guys celebrate? Did you have a first call that you needed to go and tell someone? Everybody was there with there. me. Yeah, everyone except for, uh, I mean, my roommate who had been drafted in the second round at the time, Tom Wendell. And uh, it was, everybody was there. So it was kind of cool. Everything kind of hit me at once. I was kind of in my own room. Like I went to my own room and that's when my name finally got called. And then I finally walked out of my room and everybody had celebrated with me. Now you had a fantastic year in 2017. Is there anything that you changed? Uh, I kind of simplified everything. Okay. I, just, I grew up as a bit of an analytical, changing my mechanics all the time. And this year, I finally just talked to some of the coaches. I was like, no matter what I stick with in April, that's what I'm going to do in September. Yeah. And I think just being able to stick to a game plan really helps me keep things simple and go out there and just focus on doing my job instead of mechanics. Is there anything specifically you're hoping to work on here at Arizona Fall League? Just continuing to command the zone and uh, being able to get out and prove myself in a competitive setting. Now, improving yourself, last year you worked solely uh, in relief. Yes. Is there hope to one day work your way back into the rotation? More than anything, I'm just trying to have a job. It doesn't matter <laughs> if I'm throwing six, seven innings, if I'm throwing in the eighth inning, the ninth inning, it doesn't matter. I just want to have that opportunity to throw the ball as often as I can. Now you do uh, play the guitar mm -hmm. and sing a little bit. Yeah, I do. I'm not sure if everyone knows that, but where does that <laughs> love come from? And I did see a video where you were serenading your team kind of in the training room from a couple of years ago or something, I'm oh, not sure. Oh, I remember that, But yeah. you're really talented. Okay, Thank so you. where does this love of music and all that come from? Well, about fifth or sixth grade, uh, my brother played guitar with a bunch of his friends in high school and I kind of needed something else to do because all I kind of did as a younger kid was play baseball and golf and stuff like that. And I just started learning. I wanted to get good enough to play Creed, eventually learned how to play Creed, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep going with this. I've always been big into music, and I just, ever since I started learning how to play, I wasn't able to put it down. Now, did you learn guitar first and then start singing? Because you have a really good voice. How does this go together? Um, I mean, I always sang when I was like a little kid, too. Yeah. I did like choir and stuff like that, but... I would say I probably did guitar more seri or I took guitar more seriously before singing. Do you now do you play out here at all? Like how often are you playing? I, it's just so cool. And is that just a hobby or is it something that you really take serious? It's something that I kinda take serious, but it's more like a serious hobby. What I mean by yeah. that is like when I go home I have my buddies Dave and Vince that I go home and record with and Dave has his own studio in his house, so we'll always go and tinker around with stuff like that. Um, I'm playing every opportunity I can now. I mean, we have a guitar over in the in the other room. I play it like, before the games uh -oh. and stuff like that. It, just, <laughs> it keeps me balanced, because yeah. baseball can sometimes be stressful yeah, at times, exactly. and then music kind of calms me down. So it's a nice balance. So have you thought about Tyler BD raps, right? Right. Have you thought about doing a little rap kind of thing together, teammates? Yeah, we've always talked about it. I remember the first day I met him when he first got drafted, we were at the Marriott Hotel and he told me that he rapped and I played guitar. I was right there, I was just like, hey, come over to my room, let's jam out a little bit. <laughs> so. Okay, we might have you guys do that, but no, I'm just kidding. I'll put you on the spot with that. But okay, let's get back to baseball, but more importantly, role model. Do you have one growing up? Who did you look up to? It was always my brother. My brother was always my role model. Him and I are inseparable, and he's always set the bar for me with everything that I've ever done. Uh, he ended up being a Division One baseball player. That made me want to go off and play collegiate baseball. Uh, professional baseball, was, I mean, it, it was a pipe dream for me. I never knew what I could do, because I, when I was growing up, I was kind of shorter and fatter, and I got cut from some of the teams that I tried out for, so my brother always pushed me. Okay, you just said you were shorter. You no are 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> um, sometimes, some I read was 6'7", some say 6'6", mm -hmm. six, six, some say 6'7", six, what are you? 6'7". Six, seven. Okay, 6'7", six, seven. do you use that height advantage at all when you're out there? I try to, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, being a tall pitcher always has its advantages of staying on top of the ball and yeah. getting more depth in the zone. Okay, now who, is there anyone you would try to mimic your game after? 
Uh, I wouldn't say in particularly. I'm not trying to mimic anybody anymore. I used to do that, and that's kind of what got in my own way. I stopped trying to be the best version of myself. So I kind of went back to being internal and staying who I am. Is there a piece of advice you'd give to guys either in the minors or in college or high school wanting to one day be a professional baseball player? Yeah, don't overthink it. You know, this game is already as hard enough as it is. Getting in your own head is yeah. the worst thing you can possibly do. So it's true what they say, it's 80% mental. It really is. <laughs> it really, it really is. is. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you. For DJ Snelton, I'm Sandy Charles with Baseball Senses.